Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. We're back with Code Green at 3 p.m. on a given Monday with Howard Wig. Now, Howard is the host guest, and I'm the guest host. Am I right, Howard? That either that or we reverse the roles. And we have a we have an alliteration going on today. Mm -hmm. We're calling this show "Doldrums Out." Daylight in, that means daylight is delicious. Absolutely. It's, Couldn't have said a, it better myself. It's a statement, a, 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 an, an apotheosis to sunshine. Mm -hmm, Let's mm -hmm. talk about sunshine today, Let's Howard. talk about sunshine. Why don't we bring up the first slide by way of introduction. Daylighting basics. Now, the real basics go back about 6.4 million years ago in what's now southwestern Ethiopia, where Arti, the first Homo habilis specimen, was found. Oh, the East Rift Valley. Yeah, yeah, right. We right speak there. of little else on these shows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's, it's all about that moment. I can see absolutely. it, visualize it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, all of which relates to our topic, because the savanna at that point was pretty gosh darn lush and green. Yeah. And here's this teeny little three foot high bipedal. Yeah, let's look at Howard as he does this. Let's see, <laughs> yeah. Howard is making a gesture I think mm. the world would not uh, want to miss. Okay. This Behind us, we have that lush valley he was mm -hmm. talking about. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> this teeny little three foot high creature, and he is literally surrounded by woolly mammoths. No, woolly mammoths are up north more. But saber toothed tigers, any man manner of predators who would like nothing better than to snatch him up and have him for breakfast or lunch or dinner. You mean, when you say him, you mean Homo habilius? Homo habilius, yeah. yes. What kind of name is habilius? Is that French? Uh, no, that would be from the, uh, the Latin, which okay. would be derived from the Greek. Right. Thank you. Yeah. So he had to live, not, oh, he didn't have many wits about him because his, his forehead was still slanted back, so he didn't have much brain capacity. That didn't come till later. So he had to live by his eyes. And since the savanna was green, he had to make a very, very clear distinction between one shade of green and another and another to see if that saber-toothed tiger was lurking somewhere in back there. Uh, this, is, this is an interesting discussion, Howard. It's oh, heaven somewhere been between to biochemistry and uh, anatomy and uh, anthropology. It's all yeah, rolled into so one what, here on Code Green with Howard. Who, who could yeah. and note that there's the green in there? There it is. So yeah. note that yeah, it all definitely ties together, and. Somehow this little creature survived, not by his wits so much as by his eyes. And then finally, about a quarter million years ago, we emerged to Homo sapiens, the wise being. And he evolved, got his brain larger and larger and larger till now he can have wonderful technologies for bringing daylighting into Building. So it, but I guess what you're saying is you need to be, you have a certain level of intelligence to appreciate uh, daylight. Absolutely. Otherwise, you would just take it for granted. Yeah, we can't yeah. do that. No, here. we can't do We're that. We're scientific. We go on evidence based learning. Absolutely. Yeah. So, what, so, so what's the big hubbub about daylight lighting? Okay, now if we bring up the next slide, we're going to see this. So, the, in this case, daylighting refers to cause a, having side light, light on the sides, which just doesn't come in through a window and cause a glare or cause heat. What you want to do with good lighting, lighting design is bring the daylight well into the building, usually a minimum of 20 feet into the building, and have it be uniform. That means you don't want a splash of light here and darkness there. You want the light all over the place. And an ordinary window cannot do that. It will cause glare and heat. Mm. So how in the world do you do that? Let's go to the next slide. Mm. So this is, refers to efficacy, and all the red lines on the left are the artificial lighting sources, the higher you go, the more efficacious mm. is the means of lighting a space. And the short 
uh, yellow line is a normal window, and the longer yellow line, the most efficacious, is the uh, yellow line on the right. And now we're going to see how in the world this efficaciousness is achieved with oh, the I, next slide. I can slide. hardly wait. I'm so curious. Yeah, yeah. And I cannot read the bottom of this that slide, but that's oh. okay. Oh, we, if you want to, uh, you know, we, of course, I, I no, forgot no, my glasses. No, no, at a later oh. time, I, oh, okay. my forehead's not big enough yet. <laughs> okay. I'm working on that. So when you're, in addition to energy efficiency, when you're bringing light into a room, you need to meld it with the architecture and you have to take in all of these human considerations because the idea is to promote a, or, or deliver a light that creates a sense of well-being, happiness, and productivity. Uh, what is that like, though? I mean, you, you, oh, you well, speak of it in conclusory terms, all, but all, all how do you achieve that? What are the characteristics of light that makes you all feel All we good? have to do is go to the next slide. It's an excellent okay, question. I can hardly wait. Okay. So we... So what have we learned now about the characteristics of light that makes you feel good? Okay. Oh, oh you go back to Homo habilius 6.4 million years ago. Yeah. The artificial light, the, say the light in the studio, is really, really good, but it does not match the daylight that your ancestors and mine grew up with for 6.4 million years. We are creatures of, of our, our DNA, and our mm -hmm. DNA w grew up in a place where there was plenty of daylight, so mm -hmm. is this what you're saying? Yeah. We like daylight. It we makes us like feel daylight, you know, good. And we are at our most productive with daylight. So what we describe here is the best means of bringing that light in a uniform manner. Uniform, no heat, no glare, just nice, soft, gentle daylight into a space. That's what we're doing. Okay, and if I'm just looking at the pictures you've shown so far. Mm -hmm. It looks like um, oh, I want to oh. get the daylight from a window. Mm -hmm. I want to have it relatively high in the room. Mm -hmm. I want to have the ceiling in the room uh, a light color mm -hmm. so it reflects mm -hmm. the, the light that comes in through that window onto, and, onto and, the whole room. And brings it deep into the space. Deep into the room, yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. And the bottom slide is an example of glare. That's what we don't want. So we go to the next slide. And all of these things need to be taken into consideration when you're looking at daylighting a, a space. And we've you have discussed uh, most of them already. And uh, something that's mentioned here is controls. What you want are light sensors in that space such that when adequate daylight is brought in, the electric lights automatically go off. Yeah, well, that's a big thing. Save, that's, that's what it's all about. Save, save energy, right? And yet yeah, brings up a story. So glad you asked. I was in Austin, Texas some years ago, and we were taken to a brand new elementary school, which was to be the daylighting example of the nation. And sure enough, there were floor to ceiling windows with great big overhangs so you didn't get any of that hot Texas sun down into the space. And it could, it could be controlled for whatever environment you wanted. And this was a beautiful sunny June day. So you have this beautiful, these beautiful daylit classrooms. And we went from classroom to classroom and we oohed and awed how delicious this daylighting was. And then when the tour was over, I went to the architect who was taking us around, and I said, did you notice that every room we were in had its lights on? And he hung his head and said, I was hoping you wouldn't notice. <laughs> so my mantra from then on is when you put daylighting, especially into a classroom, that there's automatic controls, and if you want to override the controls, there, there are in the principal's yeah. office. You have to call the principal's office and well, justify. Why would you want to override the controls? If you're getting light in from either daylight or whatever, well, it, whatever in this case, other you're getting you it have. from both the daylighting and the artificial light. That's, that's a waste. You don't, that's a waste. That's a waste. The <laughs> idea of daylighting is to make kids, in this case, more productive. Yeah. But 
also to turn those gosh darn lights off. Okay, let's do a sort of mm, conceptual schematic of how mm -hmm, that would work. Mm -hmm. So there's a sensor mm -hmm. in the uh, electrical lighting system. And, and there, it's up in the ceiling, yep. And it, it can sense when you have daylight above a certain, what, lumens? Mm -hmm, yeah. A, the, a lumens yeah. measurement. Yeah, it would probably be, in this case, about uh, 30 lumens, yeah. 30 lumens. And if mm -hmm. there's 30 lumens coming oh, in oh, from... Oh, now you got me confused. Foot candles, foot candles. Foot candles, okay. Yeah, yeah. lumens come out of the lamp, foot candles are measured in the space. Okay, foot candles, yeah. Yep, yep. So you measure that, and I guess you measure it in a number of places, not just mm -hmm. in one place. And you want to see that the light is being distributed around that room, mm -hmm. and that it's working the way it should, and that people can adequately function, efficiently function mm -hmm. in that space because of the daylight light. And, and uh, comfort, comfortably function. There's oh. no, no glare here. No glare. And there's no glare, and there's no underlighting. So it, 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 it can read many different characteristics of the daylight. And absolutely. And when it yeah. hits the perfect profile of daylight, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it turns the, it turns the li the electrical lights yeah. electric lights off. And right? the the best example in our everyday lives are you look at a street light and you see this little curious cylin cylinder on top of it. That's the light sensor. That's the sensor when yeah. the sun comes up in the morning, boom, the street light goes out. This is. Uh, what we're talking about in a classroom is a much more sensitive. Uh, but I have to admit, that. Howard, that was a trick question. Mm -hmm. Oh, God. That yeah, was a I, trick oh, question, and your just... reference to the, the street light with the mm -hmm. little cylinder on the top, that mm -hmm. also seems to indicate that there's a, a tipping point, mm -hmm. a certain moment, you know, a certain set of circumstances mm -hmm. that turn that electric light off. Mm -hmm. But why doesn't, why isn't it a rheostatic kind of change? In other words, a little daylight mm. and oh. it, it goes off a little bit. And by the time you get to a special place, it goes off all the mm -hmm. way, but it's, it's graduated. Yeah. Why isn't it graduated? That, that's Did you mean to tell me that? No, that is called dimming. And for a few, uh, sensors have improved in technology so, so logarithmically in the last 20 years that you can certainly have, have it as a, di a dimming system. And then say a heavy cloud came over and the classroom got a little exactly. uncomfortable, boom, you just bring up a little bit of light. Yeah. And these are all LEDs now, and LEDs could care less how often they're dimmed and undimmed, switched on and off. Yeah, and, and the dimming, the yeah. dimming mechanism, the dim, dimming device doesn't mm -hmm. care either because yeah. that's all electronics. It, it's just it's built, not a physical switch. It's built into the same sensor. Yeah. Sen sensors are just incredibly acute. So if things, I yeah. want to actually maximize my energy savings here, mm -hmm. I would have a dimming switch rather than an on-off switch. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. You know, let's take a, a short break. And uh, maybe I can think of another trick question mm. for you right after well, that break. We're just getting warmed up. That's, <laughs> that's yeah. Howard Wig. Mm -hmm. He is the true host of Code, of Code Green, and I am just an interloper uh, enjoying mm -hmm. my afternoon here on a Monday mm -hmm. with Howard. Trying to trick me up. We'll yep. be, yes, I am. Yes, we'll be yep. right back. Mm -hmm. You'll okay. see. Hey, aloha, Stan Energy Man here on Think Tech Hawaii, where community matters. This is the place to come to think about all things energy. We talk about energy for the grid, energy for vehicles, energy in transportation, energy in maritime, energy in aviation. We have all kinds of things on our show, but we always focus on hydrogen here in Hawaii because it's my favorite thing. That's what I like to do. But we talk about things that make a difference here in Hawaii, things that should be a big changer for Hawaii, uh, and we hope that you'll join us every Friday at noon on Stand Energy Man and take a look with us at new technologies and new thoughts on how we can get clean and green in Hawaii. Aloha. Hi, I'm Ethan Allen, your host on ThinkTech's Likeable Science Show. Every Friday at 2 p.m., we delve in the magical, <laughs> magical, fascinating world of science. How science applies to your life, why you should care about science, what impact science has on you and on those around you why you need to know some science. It's a fun, interesting, painless way to learn some good science that you can use. See you there. We're back, I'm Jay Fidel, I'm the guest host, and that's Howard Wig. he's the host guest of, um, of uh, Green, uh, Code Green. But I have to tell him a story first. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. This is about 10 years ago. 
And there was this entrepreneur from, I want to say, one of those red states, mm -hmm. Oklahoma, Arkansas, somewhere in mm -hmm. there. And he came to Hawaii, and he was demonstrating the most remarkable device. And what it was was a, a tube. And it, it, it was a flexible, flexible mm -hmm. tube. Mm -hmm. It was like inside there was... Uh, you know, um, uh, some kind of flexible plastic, mm -hmm. and it, it, it carried the light. It, mm -hmm. it, it, it mm -hmm. carried the light. And he would put it up on the roof, mm -hmm. and it would be a sort of a funnel on the roof, a set of mirrors mm -hmm. or something, mm -hmm. and it would carry that light all around through the roof system, and then bingo, in your kitchen, mm -hmm. and it will let go of that light, shining that light all over your kitchen. Now, mm -hmm. this is pretty good. This is better than a skylight, because mm -hmm. it didn't have to be, uh, you know, exactly... Uh, on the roof, you know, where there is a hole in the roof comes down. It could be anywhere in the house picking up mm -hmm. the light from the outside. And he was trying to market that. Mm -hmm. I thought that was a great, a great mm -hmm. thing. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I never saw it after that. Well, where is it? Did it go away? It sounded like mm -hmm. a great idea. And there's a new invention called Sola Tube, S-O-L-A-T-U-B-E. Google it and you will find that Sola Tube is a manufacturer and they do well over a billion dollars worth of uh, sales a year. I don't see them in Hawaii. Are they, uh, are they coming here soon? No, they, they're all over the place. Is that right? Yeah. You put them in your house. Uh, well, I, I have an open beam ceiling, but a lot of people could put them in their house. Yeah. It's good, good for small commercial also. Ah, yeah, sure. Yeah. And if that's the case, you also need those sensors, don't you? Uh, yeah. So, because otherwise you're you're kind just going to be leaving lights on all the time. Yeah. 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 Where can I do the solar tube make the uh, the sensors as well? Uh, don't know, but they they would certainly associate themselves with a sensor maker, such that they dialed up just the right degree of sensitivity. And the sensor would be. At the, at the top of the tube or the bottom? It would be on the ceiling, because what you're concerned about with, you, you have a light-colored ceiling. What you're concerned about is how much light is up there, because you know that it's getting down. Yeah, and, I, and also, you, you don't want to have it on the floor. You'd trip over it. Yeah, right, right, yeah. right, right. Or you don't want to have it on a table. It looks wall. kind of unsightly, yeah. Just as long as it could be. Mm -hmm. so, and, and, I mean, that's a brilliant solution. Yeah. You think about it, and, and there's no moving parts, not a single mm -hmm. moving part, mm -hmm. except the sensor, which doesn't move anyway, mm -hmm. electronic. So, I mean, to me, that's the kind of energy savings that really, whatever it costs, it's, it's have a huge benefit. Mm -hmm. The investment is going to give great returns. Mm -hmm. And, and it's, in, in a way, it's more flexible more mm, creative, more capable of what kinds of alternative configurations than mm -hmm. building windows, because the window may not face the right direction. Yep. You may not have the choice in, in your building or your And home. You, you have a much wider distribution when the light, daylighting comes from the ceiling, yeah. yeah so uh, I could have a set of these things on my roof, and I could feed the light from one location mm -hmm. with those mirrors and that, that kind of tube. Yeah, you, you can feed about uh, 400 square feet. It, the typical residential roof is about eight feet tall, and you you can feed 400 square feet. You can feet light my whole house. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that's what's called uh, top, top lighting. But let's look at the next slide, see mm -hmm. what the okay. heck's going on here. Okay, this is what bad design entails, so we want to go to the next slide because we're going to get to good design. And this is the particular uh, brand of daylighting that we're talking about, where up on the clear story there, that upper window, you can't see the louvers, but it's a series of louvers that, oh, well, let's, let's go to the next slide and we'll see just how, how it works. Yeah, so there's the louvers, and on the right, it shows the yellow sunlight coming in, hitting one of the louvers, bouncing up, and then bouncing up only in a certain way because it's caught by the upper louver, and that directs the sunlight onto the ceiling, just as uh, Jay was indicating, should be done in good lighting, daylighting design day. Must have been listening to you. <laughs> and let, let's go to the next slide. And this is a simulation of exactly what happens. If, this is what you want to do, is you want to take that spot point of sunlight and distribute it all over the place, again, in a uniform manner. Uniform means you have just as much light in that far corner as you do right in the, the middle of the room. And that, that's what this is designed so to do. So you use the louvers to do it? Yeah, and these are stationary louvers. You, you don't have to move them or anything. So 
Oh, I see. So yeah. this is right. I have a question, though. I mean, mm -hmm. the louvers usually are to protect you from the weather, aren't they? Mm -hmm. uh, these louvers don't protect you from the weather. No, the, these are light louvers. Light louvers. Yeah, I mean, and you fix them. Light, light transmission louvers. But, but Howard, mm -hmm. if the sun is coming up and down, if the mm -hmm. ambient light in the outside of the building mm -hmm. is changing, with who knows what would change it, but mm -hmm. things would change. Cl clouds are such a thing as clouds. clouds. Yep. So, yep. Yeah, that's that, they had those in the East Rift Valley. I know mm -hmm. they did. Um, so if that was so. Wouldn't you want to be able to change the louvers? Wouldn't you want to put sensors on there to sense the light outside? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, or, mm -hmm. Well, wherever you sense it and mm -hmm. say, hmm, we're going to move the position mm -hmm. of those louvers now to get more light on the ceiling mm -hmm, or whatever mm -hmm. in order to adapt it to the most efficient transmission of light. Isn't that true? That would be ideal. And now you have two words, moving parts. Ah, uh, moving parts, minute dreadful. You put moving parts into any system you are asking for trouble. Trouble. <laughs> yep. So, as uh, somebody in this room, I forget who it was, mentioned the word dimming. If you accompany that with a dimming system, you can accommodate early morning, late afternoon, cloud cover, what, whatever, so that you maintain that level of illumination. But you know, I, and I certainly agree about moving parts because mm -hmm. that's just dreadful, and you get you get mechanical issues, and, and, and this, you know it's going to. We're going to these systems here are supposedly going to last for twenty years. You're going to accumulate a lot of dust and dirt. And but things. can't I use? Uh, I don't know if the technology has caught up to this idea, but um, can I use a kind of magnetic uh, reorganization of the of the structure? the glass structure in mm -hmm. this louver, um, so that it, it effectively controls the way the louver reflects the light without moving the louver. Mm -hmm. you know, it's like those windows that automatically go dark mm -hmm. or go light, depending yep. on mm -hmm. how you, nothing moves, nothing moves. Yep. It's just the way the window handles oh, the light. So, so you would have some kind of chemical composition within the louver That's itself, it. That's such it. that during really glary daylight, it reflects just a little, and then when it's either early morning, late afternoon, it lightens up and reflects yeah. a lot. Yeah, without any moving okay. parts. I think you ought to take a patent out on that. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll, we can go on it together. It's yeah. okay. Okay. Anyway, I'll go to your next slide the so next we can slide get on here. down the road. I sure like being in the, in the East Rift Valley today. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. So let's, well, we talked about getting deep into the space. Let's go to the next slide. And, oh, this is a, uh, just kind of a sales pitch on this particular uh, product. And it is, it's very easy to install, I think, installation per louver. And see, there's many, many louvers in one piece. That can be done in something like 20 to 30 minutes. So your labor costs go way down. Uh, next slide. And that's in lieu of the glass itself. Uh, yeah. That is the glass. That, that is the glass, yeah. Oh, here, here's a better slide of it. It is going to get dirty, so you need to uh, you know, cl clean it periodically. Not self-cleaning. No. That, that could be done, but uh, that would add another layer of complexity. And You want to keep things simple here, yeah. yeah. And next slide. Okay, well, I wish that they had uh, put Homo sapiens in here, and plus Homo habilius. Uh, the, I think there's going, oh, oh, oh energy codes. Ener how could I miss that? The new energy code, which I am in charge of, the, the International Energy Efficiency Code 2015 version, uh, the commercial site is about 74 pages long. Four pages are devoted to daylighting. What do they say? Do it. <laughs> Took them four pages to say that? No, uh, there's all kinds of diagrams. Here's the proper okay. way to do it. Okay, is this and a requirement? This is going to be a requirement. You can get out of it, but if you want a lot of window space, you must have daylighting. It, this is for commercial buildings, not, not for residential okay, buildings. It may be coming for that, too. You know, I don't know why, it's just a digression, but I read uh, a few days ago that California had a statute which was just going into effect requiring new residential structures to include solar mm -hmm. on the rooftop. They, they're imitating, they're about 10 years behind the times. Hawaii's required that for at least 10 years now. 
New structures must have solar? Yep. New, new residences must have new solar. New residences. I mean, is that, yeah. is, is, is that solar uh, photovoltaic so, solar? Nope. Solar water heating. Solar water. What, what about photovoltaic solar? Uh, that hasn't uh, come yet. It, the market is so efficient that we really don't need a law. Yeah. The Hawaiian Electric had to slow them down, push them back. Whoa, we got too much here. Yeah. And that, that's a whole different uh, subject yeah. of, of discussion. But uh, you know what, what it shows, I guess the mm -hmm. point of all of that is that the codes, including the code mm -hmm. you wrote and this code in California, um, is um, the, these codes are becoming more mm, uh, high requirement Str in terms yeah. of, in terms of uh, green energy. Absolutely. And it's probably and going to be the trend in the future as it, well. It's the trend of the present. Yeah. Uh, codes are market transformers. They set the pace and the rest of the market follows. I can give instance after instance after instance of that. So if I use these window devices, you know, Day daylight, how much energy am I gonna save? Give me a, um, a, a number, a percent, if you will, mm -hmm. assuming the best configuration that, that I can okay. get. Okay, I'll, I'll go back in time a little bit, say 20 years, which technologically is, is uh, an eon. And if you did a uh, pie chart of energy use in a typical commercial building, you would find that up to 40% of the all over energy use was for lighting. So if you can chop a big chunk out of that with daylighting, you are really achieving significant savings. Now in Hawaii, when you have, um, you know, a frequently a hot climate, a tropical mm -hmm. climate, when you have these windows, aren't you letting in heat as well? You How do are. you deal with that in, in this perfect building that you're mm -hmm. scoping out? Uh, you shade them. You shade the windows in, in Hawaii. You shade the outside? Yeah. yeah. Sh so that, shading the inside doesn't do as, nearly as much good. So if you're shading the windows, aren't you restricting the amount of light that is showing through, Howard? Yes, but there's still plenty of it. There, what inside in our typical little uh, classroom that we were talking about, elementary school kids function fine under 60 f or 30 foot candles. You of a certain age, I, I'm excluded, need more like 60 foot, foot candles. And in a, a care home where people's eyes are fading, you need about up to 100 foot candles. So the little kids can get by with 30 on a hot, sunny day, you have 10,000 foot candles out there. Wow. So you don't need to worry about a, a, a deficit of foot candles. So, but, but again, the shades are permanent, they're not yeah, that, movable, that's the ideal, no moving yeah. parts, all that. that. That's the idea. And that yeah. works. That works you're perfectly. Just, yeah. Preventing uh, too much light from coming in. Too much and, and, and too heat. much heat. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. So what's, what's the message here? Oh, uh, it whoa. seems to me like, you know, A, I, of course I have to follow the code. Mm -hmm. But maybe I should go further and I should put those solar tubes in or I should mm -hmm. go further than the code requires me to. It all sounds so totally well, positive. Let me uh, do a shout out for the big box stores, which you wouldn't normally find me doing. They are great big cavernous structures with at least 20 feet of roof up there, maybe 25 feet. Look at them. They're all daylit voluntarily. What's going on here? Number one, you don't need your artificial light. You save a heck of a lot of electricity. Number two, the first discovery of the relationship between sales and daylighting came in supermarkets. You put daylighting over the produce section and those apples and oranges. Oh. They look so much better. Sales took off like mad. And people are more comfortable buying them. It takes Precisely. them back to the days yeah. of Homo habilis. Mm -hmm. Precisely, yeah. yeah. You heard it here. Yeah. But I have one more quick, quick, mm -hmm. quick trick question for mm -hmm. you, Howard. You know, we have, we have wind storms here. We do? Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. We have mm -hmm. extreme weather here. Oh, okay. we do? And you're that, telling me to put, it. instead of building my wall up to the roof, mm -hmm. you tell me, don't do that, Jay. Mm -hmm. Build windows instead and, and get the special light, it'll help you. Mm -hmm. But isn't, doesn't that make my structure weaker and less able to deal 
um, you know, with windstorms and extreme weather going forward? Well, let me tell you a little story. Many years ago, I was in Guam doing energy code training, and I was staying in a Holiday Inn, and because of my circadian rhythm, having flown over eight hours, I would be the first one in the hotel to wake up. And at my door front, there would be the Guam Times. Pick up the Guam Times, go to the kitchen, or go to the cafeteria or restaurant, and they served a combination of Japanese and American food. I would get my miso soup and my namase and some scrambled eggs, and I would go right by a plate glass window that was at least 12 feet high, and I would look out on a vacant lot that used to have buildings in it, but had been swept away by a 183-mile wind gust. They have typhoons over there. And this glass structure had stood the test of time. Ha! Ha! There you go. And it was beautifully daylit. I, I, looking back, that's one reason I enjoyed it so much, sit, sitting there. Beautiful Well, I've daylight. certainly yeah. enjoyed this discussion with you. Mm -hmm. I've learned so much. I've, I've learned about uh, homo habilis. I've mm -hmm. learned about circadian rhythms. And I guess, mm -hmm. you know, the next time we meet, I think we should probably talk about whether the cir circadian rhythms of the homo habilis was the same as the circadian rhythms uh, of the homo sapien, and whether it was the same in the East Rift Valley uh, uh, in... Um, um, where was it now? No, Nor Norway or no, no, Nairobi, Ethiopia? No, uh, no, uh, the East Rift Valley in yeah. East Africa, yeah. uh, and, uh, or it, it, whether it's different here. Mm -hmm. And we and we we are going to we're going to approach this because we think we we may be able to find um, variations on the theme and do even better. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Howard. Yeah, I'd be glad to. Yep, <laughs> let's come back soon mm -hmm. to your show. <laughs>